Talking Transportation, T-Talk videos on Transportation TV. This T-Talk features a January 13, 2016 speech by Chris Ermson, director of Google's self-driving car program. I lead a team in California that is working on building cars that can drive themselves. Um, and we're really building on a legacy of research and, and work that comes way before our time. And I get the privilege of coming out and being kind of the talking head for our project. So please recognize this is uh, you know, clearly not all my work. We have a massive team doing this. And then they're building on all the research that many of you have contributed of, to over, over many decades. Today, I was hoping to tell you a little bit about uh, why we do this work, why it's so important, uh, why, uh, how the technology works, and a little bit of update uh, so you can get a sense for you know, how it's coming along and when you could see it on the road. So the team that I lead's mission is to improve people's lives by transforming mobility. The first part of this has to do with improving safety on America's roads uh, and the world's roads. 1.2 million people killed worldwide, 33,000 people killed in the U.S. And if the early numbers this year are telling, that number is going to go up to probably around 40,000 people. You know, we, we've worked hard to improve our infrastructure, um, but we grew vehicle miles by 38% between 1990 and 2010. And we grew road lane miles by 6%. So there just isn't the road to put all those more cars. And this has a very human toll. So if you take the 50 minute average commute every day that American workers have, 120 million workers, that turns out to be 6 billion minutes per day wasted. You divide that by the average lifetime, that ends up being 162 lifetimes wasted every day, sitting in traffic getting between point A and B. So there's a real human cost to all of this, this challenge, and so there's an opportunity there to do some real good. And as the baby boomers become unwilling or unable to drive, give them the mobility that they all so deserve to be able to get around, it'll be an incredibly important uh, step for our society. And so our team's mission is to try and do all of this through the technology that we're developing for self-driving cars to really improve people's lives. Now, I came to Google in 2009, um, and at the time, probably like many of you today, asked, what the heck is Google doing thinking about self-driving cars? And it really comes from this place where we have incredible engineering talent, and some, we've been very fortunate with some of our businesses that we now have resources we can apply to go solve important problems. And transportation is one of those that we think matters. When we came to start the project, we didn't just want to public pa publish papers. We wanted to try and change the world. We wanted to convince ourselves that technology would work. So we set two challenges when we set out. The first was to drive 100,000 miles on public roads, and the other was to drive 1,000 miles of interested roads. And that's what you can see here. As an engineer, your job is to cheat. And so if you want to drive 100,000 miles on public roads, you go out and you have the car on the freeway, and you go up and down and up and down and up and down, and you gather miles very quickly. And you learn from that, but it maybe doesn't push the whole spectrum of what driving is. So the 1,000 mile challenge was for us to really make sure we got out onto roads that weren't just freeways, onto, into the communities and drive through those. Things like driving from San Jose to San Francisco, but instead of taking one of the freeways, driving up El Camino Real, which is 240-something uh, traffic lights, five lanes wide in places, one lane wide with trees in other places. After about a year and a half, we were able to actually check off that 100,000 miles and 1,000 miles. And some of the technology we developed was things like this. Uh, this is precision, ability to precisionly, precisely locate the car on the road. The white box is where GPS tells us it is, and that would have been bad. Uh, and the silver uh, car is where we really were. And the way this works is that the car is using the laser sensor that it has and a map that it's built ahead of time, and matching the two, much like if you took a tracing of a drawing, uh, you can figure out where that tracing paper was when you started. And it does that 10, 20 times per second. And with that, we can figure out where the car is to better than 10 centimeter accuracy anywhere that we have a map, and deal with things like bridges that are overhanging or cliffs. In building this technology, we really had to think more about what does the car need to understand the road. Solving the freeway problem is comparatively simple. As we drive around uh, in neighborhoods, we really need to see right up to the skin of the vehicle, but also out to hundreds of meters in all directions. And so what you're seeing here is the data from the sensors that we have uh, custom engineered for this vehicle, allowed to sweep all the way around at relatively high frame rate. Uh, we really are in kind of that, that, that Chinese proverb sense of interesting times. 
uh, in transportation. There's a lot of change happening with automation moving across all of the different domains. Uh, and I would ask for many of you to help us in kind of bridging the gap here from research lab to, to the road uh, and help do something good for the world. Thank you so much. T-Talk videos on Transportation TV.